Hey guys, Chris Hicks with UT Extension. One of the weeds we have a lot of trouble with in Tennessee is buckhorn plantain. Buckhorn plantain is a cool season perennial that is very drought tolerant. It has a deep tap root, which makes it very uh, hardy and uh, thrives really well in Tennessee. It's hard to control, hard to get rid of once it's established. And a lot of times we see it in hay fields, maybe that have been cut a little too close or have suffered from uh, a lack of fertility and some of the grass has died out and this buckhorn comes and really thrives, grows really low to the ground and shades out more desirable grasses. There is a new product from Corteva called Duracore. Duracore has been widely marketed by Corteva as being really good on buckhorn planting and our friends at Smith Farmers Co-op were kind enough to give us this jug to try in our spring plot and so we've sprayed our buckhorn planting with Duracore among other products and we're going to look today to see which of those products did really well on this cool season perennial weed. Now the first plot we want to look at is our 2,4-D plots. Uh, to my right we have a low rate of 2,4-D, a quart per acre, and to my left we have a high rate of 2,4-D. We have two quarts per acre. And traditionally 2,4-D has been one of our strongest products against buckhorn plantain. Uh, but the low rate historically has not done as well and we found that to be the case in this plot as well. We saw some wilting, we saw some plants that looked sick the first week or two after we sprayed them, but uh, about a month after they've rebounded and they've put on a seed head. Some still look a little bit sick, but uh, most of them are still alive. They haven't quite died out. On the other hand, with the high rate of 2,4-D, the two quart per acre rate, we got a, a pretty good kill. We, uh, most of the plants uh, died that we were able to hit with the herbicide with the, herbicide with the higher rate of 2,4-D. So with the higher rate of 2,4-D, we got a, a much better kill than we did with the lower rate. So uh, if we're use, using 2,4-D, historically what we've recommended at the University of Tennessee is either uh, a one-two punch of kind of uh, a three, three pints per acre in the fall followed by three pints per acre in the spring or hit it really hard with, with four pints in the spring and uh, you'll, you'll get pretty good results out of 2,4-D, but you do have to use the higher rate. And again, in our plot, that's what we found to be the case. Now, your low rate of 2,4-D, uh, a lot of people will, will use that and be disappointed in the results because it's just not gonna do as well. And one of the things that I often say is the most expensive herbicide is the one that doesn't work. So even 2,4-D at a low rate might seem inexpensive, about $5 and a half an acre, but, in the long run, it's going to be uh, pretty expensive if you try it on a plant that it does not kill. So spend the extra money, use the, the proper rate or a, a different herbicide uh, if you're not willing to use the higher rate of 2,4-D. The third plot we want to look at today is 2,4-D mixed with dicamba. And so this plot is uh, two pints of 2,4-D mixed with eight ounces of dicamba. The dicamba really adds something, especially if you want to use that lower rate of 2,4-D. And we've got pretty good weed control, as you can see from the plot here. Uh, not 100% control, uh, but again, this was a very thick stand of buckhorn. Uh, so what I would call this a pretty satisfactory level of control with the 2,4-D mixed with the, the dicamba. Uh, now one of the things we have to be concerned about with using these products uh, in the spring is volatility and so you want to be cautious about using those especially with high temperatures that may in increase volatility. Uh, be cognizant of your neighbors and those around you with using uh, formulations of products like 2,4-D and dicamba because those sometimes in certain conditions can volatize and move off target and be a problem not only from the standpoint of reduced weed control but uh, maybe more importantly uh, can damage off target species so we want to make sure we are good stewards of these herbicides and be careful when using products like 2,4-D and dicamba but again in this plot we got pretty good weed control with the, those products on the buckhorn plantain. One of the products we were really excited about trying in this buckhorn trial is Duracore. Duracore is the latest offering from Corteva. It is a mixture of aminopyrrolid and Renscore. Renscore has not previously had a label 
in pasture and hay ground, but now it does. And Uricor has really been promoted as being good on buckhorn planting. And so we wanted to try it out. And indeed, we found that it is very good on buckhorn planting. Of course, this is only one trial. The University of Tennessee and other land-grant institutions will no doubt do many more uh, research-based trials. But in this trial, we got really good results from Duracor. You can see in the plot here to my right is our, our untreated check, and we have a lot of buckhorn planting seed heads that uh, germinated. And where I'm standing is actually where we sprayed with Duracor, and there are no seed heads because we got nearly 100% control and it died uh, nearly immediately. Whereas in some of the other plots, you know, the 2,4-D, the 2,4-D mixed with dicamba, uh, we, we got some seed heads. They, they came up the week after we sprayed uh, because these, even as those plants were weakened, they still had enough energy left to put on a seed head to reproduce. But that wasn't the case with the Duracor. Uh, it really didn't put out a seed head, it died uh, very quickly after we sprayed it, within a few days, uh, these plants were pretty well dead. So Duracore is a product that uh, I'm very excited about. It is uh, very affordable to be able to spray an acre, about $9.50, so uh, very reasonable, a uh, very good price point for this product. And uh, again, it did very well on the buckhorn plant, and I'm excited to try it on some warm season weeds. We're gonna do some more trials, hopefully this summer, try this Duracore on some warm season weeds, but for the cool season weeds that we have, uh, specifically the buckhorn, uh, it did very well. One of the most widely used herbicides that we have in, uh, in Tennessee is Grazon Next. Grazon Next has, has really given us uh, good control of a lot of warm season weeds and also does really well on cool season weeds, uh, but historically it hasn't done as well on buckhorn planting. I mean, a pyrrolid, which is one of the active ingredients in Grazon Next along with 2,4-D uh, hasn't, hasn't shown as much effectiveness on buckhorn. But in our trial here, uh, I don't know what the difference was, but we got really good coverage. You can see where I'm standing. We got really nice control of the buckhorn planting. Uh, we got a check right here where we didn't get uh, obviously any control because we didn't spray anything. Uh, so I was actually very pleased with the way the Grazon Next performed in this specific trial, but again, in multiple uh, university trials that have been done hasn't always been the case. So I'm still hesitant maybe to recommend Grazon next for buckhorn planting control, uh, but on a lot of other uh, weeds it does really well. And of course one of the advantages you get with Grazon next is you do get that residual activity from the amino pyrrolid. Of course along with that residual activity you have to be cognizant of uh, some of the restrictions that go along with that product not moving hay off the farm that it was produced, uh, understanding that that product does uh, remain active in, in the manure and urine of animals that, that digest plants treated with that product. And so uh, those are things to keep in mind and all that information is on the label. Uh, just a, a reminder lest I forget that the label is the law, so you always wanna read the label on any of these products that uh, we talk about today or uh, that, are, that, that you may find elsewhere. Now buckhorn planting was the primary weed we, we were trying to kill with this demonstration, but this particular field also had quite a bit of poison hemlock around the outside edge of the field border. Poison hemlock, as the name would imply, is toxic to livestock and uh, humans as well for that matter. So we uh, took our, our wand on our sprayer and sprayed the poison hemlock. And uh, as you can tell, it really did a number on the poison hemlock. Now normally we wouldn't spray a plant uh, at this stage, we want to spray uh, a biennial like poison hemlock uh, when it's in the rosette stage, lying flat on the ground, hopefully get it before it bolts up and, and makes a stem. This plant was a couple feet tall when we sprayed it, but even being bigger than we would like, it uh, obviously killed these plants and did a really nice job on a plant that's sometimes very difficult to kill. So Duracor, again, here's another example of a plant that uh, might, you might have had trouble with in the past, but maybe is a, another option to control uh, some of those difficult to control weeds. We've talked a lot today about different herbicides and whatever herbicide you choose, you wanna make sure you read that label and follow what's on that label. But you also wanna spend some time thinking about why you have weeds in the first place. If you're spraying 
year after year or even multiple times a year and not really gaining any ground, not really getting anywhere, there may be something going on. And I always use the analogy that weeds are not necessarily the disease, weeds are a symptom of a disease. So the disease might be that you have low fertility, the disease might be that you're overgrazed, that you're cutting your hay too short, the disease might be that you have soil compaction or you have wet soggy ground that doesn't grow grass really well. Maybe you have a lack of competition from more desirable grasses and you need to reseed. But spend some time thinking about why you have weeds in the first place. Uh, again, herbicides are just one tool in the toolbox. There are other things that we can do to make sure we have enough competition from desirable grasses to compete with the weeds that we do have. So take a soil test, uh, get with your local extension agent, have them come out and help you with soil testing, fertility recommendations, and weed control recommendations. And again, try to understand why you have weeds in the first place and don't solely rely on herbicides to be your only method of dealing with weeds. Again, we want to thank our friends at Smith Farmers Co-op for providing some of the chemicals that we used in our plot today. Uh, I hope that this has been helpful to you. If you have further questions, you can uh, feel free to reach out to us on our social media pages. Uh, please check out more of our videos on our YouTube page, Smith County Extension on YouTube. Uh, we're going to do more of these plots and uh, some more work with Duracore in particular on some of our difficult to control summer weeds, horse nettle, tall iron weeds, plants like that. So stay tuned for more information about that later this summer. Thanks for being with us today.